Okay, so the next part that over here, that, that we have over here, now we want to basically prove that if there is, if there is any point, now basically, now we need to prove that, now we need to prove that, that if that, <clears throat> okay, so now we need to prove that if that if there is if there is any point any point like like for example p with coordinates x and y that basically satisfies satisfies equation <coughs> equation equation one that the point that the point is is going to be is going to be to be on the on the on the on the hyperbola So, so now in order to do that, what I'm going to do is that, um, so then, now basically I'm going to basically, I'm going to basically assume that there is some point P, so let's, P x comma y satisfy the equation satisfy the equation number one equation number one and, and remember that equation number one is basically the equation that that we that we just that we just derived equation number one with with basically the condition that basically zero is less than a is less than c, meaning that um, if you have if you have your if you have your basically um, your uh, hyperbola like this, zero is less than a less than c, meaning that a can be anywhere between zero and c, meaning that it cannot be a cannot be greater than C or it cannot be less than C. It can it can basically just vary between zero and C basically. So so let P X comma Y satisfy equation number one with this condition. Then then basically the the, the equation that we had then the equation that we had basically this color is not very is not very is not the best color that you could have. I choose this color. So then this equation I can rewrite it as um, I can rewrite this equation as negative uh, y squared by b squared is equal to one minus. 1 minus x squared by a squared. 1 minus x squared by a squared. Or I can write basically y squared by b squared is equal to x squared by x squared by a squared minus y. Or I can write basically y squared y squared by b squared is equal to basically x squared minus a squared over a squared or I can write basically y squared is equal to uh, basically b squared times times x squared minus a squared over a squared so I can I can write this equation over here now we had basically we said that um, 
So then if you want to calculate PF1, I still have some space over here. So if you calculate basically PF1, PF1 is going to be equal to the to the, this distance over here. PF1 is going to be x plus the square root of x plus c whole square plus y squared is going to be the square root of x plus c whole squared plus y squared and 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 so since since this since this point p satisfies equation number one and this is basically a, a variation of equation number one i can use y squared over here so then i can write basically the square root of x plus c x plus c whole squared plus y squared which is basically b squared times times x squared minus a squared over a squared over a squared and And now we need to basically make some changes to this equation, simplify it a little bit. And then that will give you, well, I would like to, I mean, going through the algebra is not that bad. I mean, it has its own, uh, of course, you need to be able to go through the algebra. So I'm going to, it's just a few steps and then we will get to the answer. It's not that big a deal. So you can write this as the square root of basically x squared plus c squared plus 2 times cx plus b squared by b squared by a squared times x squared. And then uh, this is negative 1, so you'll get a negative b squared there. And so you can write this as, uh, you can write this as the square root of Basically, if I write, basically, if over here I can write x squared plus b squared over a squared uh, times x squared plus 2 times cx plus c squared minus b squared. And if I, and then I can write x squared times 1 plus b squared over a squared plus 2cx plus c squared minus b squared. And then I can write x squared times a squared plus b squared over a squared. And then plus 2cx plus c squared minus b squared. And then I can write... Okay, so there was basically some definition that we had related to related to um, um, basically we said that we had a definition that well b was the square root of c squared minus a squared. B was basically equal to the square root of the square root of. I have a c squared minus a squared c squared minus a squared so that means that that means that b squared b squared is equal to c squared minus a squared or c squared minus b squared or c squared minus b squared is equal to a squared so i can write this as a squared i can write this part as a squared so then this is basically a squared plus b squared over over a squared and a squared plus b squared I can write it as 
um, a squared plus b squared I can write it as uh, c squared a squared as you can see over here a squared plus b squared a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared so I can write this as I can write this as c squared so, so I can write this as c squared by a squared times x squared plus 2 times cx plus a squared plus a squared and then over here I can write this as I can write this as uh, basically c divided by a times x whole squared plus 2 times plus basically a squared plus a squared and then I can write 2 times c divided by a times x times a and then basically if these two are, can, are cancelled out you'll get 2cx over here so and that's basically the same thing that I have here 2cx plus a squared plus this whole thing over here and so I can rewrite this as c divided by a times x plus a whole squared. So I can basically after all of these steps you can write c divided by a times x plus a whole squared and that is equal to that is equal to basically um, and so basically you will get c divided by a times x plus a <coughs> plus a <coughs> so this is basically pf1 this is pf1 and using you can calculate pf2 as well and if I haven't done this myself, but I, based on the text, I can, I can, I can tell you that PF2 is going to be equal to A minus A divided by C, A minus A divided by C times X. This is going to be PF2. So we have PF1 and PF2. Now, there are a few basically things over here that we need to take into consideration. And before we do that, I'm going to first let me, let me basically save this to desktop, call it hyperbola. Hyperbola. Let's save it over there. And then I'm going to make a screenshot over here as much as I can. And take this over there and then make a new layer over here 290. And okay, so now we have some space over here. So now, um, now basically, what, what we have over here basically, in a you, you do know that in a parabola. When you basically if you have a parabola over here so this distance over here is basically this distance is a and if this is for example let's say f2 this distance is c this distance is c so basically in, in a parabola in a parabola Basically, c is always greater than c is always greater than a. C is always greater than a. <coughs> it's it, it it basically it cannot you cannot say that c is greater than or equal to a. That's not right. C is always greater than a. Now. Since P is the is to the right of the line X is equal to this way. So basically if you have if you have basically your parabola, let me draw a, a, a parabola properly. 
So if, if this is your parabola, and basically your, your foci are over here, f1 and f2, and this, this distance is a on the x-axis, so then you can say that basically this, there is a line, you can imagine that there is a line over here, x is equal to a, and there is a line over here which is basically x is equal to x is equal to negative a and this is the y-axis and this is the x-axis <coughs> so so if this is the if this is the line x is equal to a we said that basically c is always c which is basically this is point o this this distance over here is C, and this distance over here is A. So C is always greater than A. And, well, if I imagine that, if I imagine that, uh, mm, that this is the, this is the line X is equal to A, and basically the point P that I've, that I've taken, for example, over here with coordinates X comma Y, is always to the right of this line x is equal to a. That means that x is always greater than a, which means that x is always greater than a. So, so then basically um, the coordinates of the of the other point that that we that we were talking about, which was uh, which was p f one. We said that P F one, which was basically this distance from this point to this point, P F one we, we we calculated that to be to be C divided by A times X plus A. This was P F one. Now since since this is the case, since X is to the X is to the right of the of the line X is equal to A and C is always greater than A, then of course C divided by A times X plus A is always going to be, this is basically some X, this is basically some X which is greater than A, and this C is also greater than A, and this is the value of A over here, so this value over here is of course then this value over here, c divided by a times x plus a, is always greater than greater than a. So, um, is always greater than a. So then, uh, if if that is if that is the case, or or basically to to write this better, that what what I what I've written doesn't really make any sense. So you can say that c divided by a times x, c divided by a times x is of course is of course always greater than a. So I, let me repeat my repeat this because I kind of got confused over here. So we said that C, C is of course greater than A, and X is greater than, and X is greater than A. So that means that C divided by A times X is always greater than A. So what that means is that if I write, if I write, uh, basically if I, make some changes to this equation. For example, if I, if I move this to the other side of the equation, I will get zero is, is, is greater than a, uh, a minus c divided by a times x. And a minus c divided by a times x. So if I if I rewrite this, a minus c divided by a times x is less than zero. That means that this value is a negative value. 
is a negative value and this value is basically what we got this, va this value is basically what we got we got basically the value of pf2 the value of pf2 we got we got it to be a minus a divided by c times x which is exactly this thing over here so that means that pf2 is a negative value and uh, And so, since basically you cannot have a negative value as a as a as a distance, therefore you can you have to, to have to write p you have to write p f two as basically a divided by c times x minus a. No, no, no I'm sorry, I, I made a mistake over here again. You have to write basically let me see what I wrote over here. I have written PF two. I have written PF two as A minus I think I made a mistake over here. Okay, I've made a mistake over here. This is supposed to be A minus uh, C divided by A. This is supposed to be C divided by A. Okay. That's why. That's why I'm so. So I've 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 gotten P F two as a minus c divided by a times x, and a minus c divided by a times x is a negative value, and this is a this is just a distance, and a distance cannot be a negative value. So therefore, you have to write P F two as basically instead of a minus c divided by a, the other way around, meaning that c divided by a minus times x minus a you have to write it like this and and so uh, and so if if you do so then pf1 minus pf2 is basically this 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 distance over here pf1 and you have pf2 over here so pf1 minus pf2 now becomes pf1 minus pf2 becomes basically c divided by a times x plus a minus pf2 which is basically this value over here minus basically c divided by a times x plus a because you you have to 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 get to um to to multiply this negative sign by both of these two terms And so these two will cancel out and you will get 2a. So then long story short, pf1 minus pf2 is equal to 2a. And the condition that, that I had over here was that, was that basically I, I, I got some arbitrary point like p with the, with the, with the, basically with the, coordinates x comma y and we said that we assume that this point basically uh, satisfied the equation x squared by a squared minus y squared by b squared is equal to 1. We assume that this point satisfied this equation and then through the process that we came over here we concluded that pf1 minus pf2 was still equal to 2a which is basically the condition for a conic section to be the geometric condition for a, for a conic to be a hyperbola so what that means is that of course there is some more there is some more cases to this that i don't want to discuss over here anymore because that's that's not really necessary um, So then you can say that therefore you can say therefore any point any point that that satisfies that satisfies this equation that satisfies this equation over here 
lies on the lies on the lies on the on the hyperbola lies on the hyperbola so basically all that we did over here we have proved that the equation we have proved that proved that the equation that the equation of of hyperbola of hyperbola with origin with origin basically zero comma zero with origin or I would say or basically you could it's better to say basically with with the with the with the center with the center at at the origin at the origin and the transverse axis and the transverse axis axis along the along the x-axis along the x-axis is is basically x squared by a squared plus y squared by y squared by b squared is equal to one of course this is not plus this is easy mistake easy mistake to make is equal to one so that is basically all that we have done so far Now there is there is still some points over here to discuss about these parabolas. First of all, there is something called a an equilateral hyperbola. Of course, I, I keep saying parabola. What I mean to say is is hyperbola. Hyperbola. Okay, so let me take a few minutes rest and we will continue with the rest of this there is still a few things to discuss here and then we'll get to the exercises okay so now there is there is something called an equilateral hyperbola there is something called an equilateral 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 hyperbola and that is basically a hyperbola in which if basically a is equal to b then your hyperbola is, is called an equilateral hyperbola and in order to understand this we need to go back to basically We need to go back to that definition of b so basically we said that b is equal to the square root of c squared minus a squared the square root of c squared minus a squared so now if if basically if a is equal to b in this hyperbola then instead of b you can write basically a it means that a is equal to the square root of c squared minus a squared and if i square both sides of this equation I will get a squared is equal to c squared minus a squared and so what that means is that uh, is that basically a squared plus a squared is equal to c squared which is which means that 2a squared is equal to c squared is equal to c squared so this is the relationship between a and c in a in a in an equilateral in a in a hyperbola if it's supposed to be an equilateral hyperbola but this is not this is not very basically easy to understand so let's do an let's do a hyperbola graphically and see what we get over here so if this is the if these are the vertices and let's say that this is a 
I have a line over here. I want to do it properly so that we can see what happens. So let's say that this is your hyperbola over here. And and if this is your hyperbola, then we said that basically this, of course, you know that Basically, this distance over here was is is of course um, you have basically your foci over here, basically f1 and f2, and basically this is c for example, comma zero, and this is negative c, comma zero, and and over here this point would be basically uh, negative a comma zero. And this point would be a comma zero, a comma zero, and and then if you if you draw if you draw a line here and some basically a line perpendicular to the y-axis, then this this distance over here is b. This distance over here is b. Now if a is equal to b. That means that if this distance is equal to this distance, meaning that if your hyperbola basically starts from, for example, starts from here, if this distance which is a, if this distance which is a is equal to this distance b, of course, it's not going to be the same thing because if you change this distance, then this is going to change as well. But then if you change these two basically in such a way that if you basically have a, have a hyperbola in such a way that they, these two distances are the same, meaning that the, meaning that the vertex is somewhere, is, is at some point along the x-axis where these two distances become the same, then your hyperbola is called an equilateral hyperbola. This is just some definition and you need to we need to be we need to be basically familiar with it now there is some discussion over here about the about the, the about the formula that we just derived and that that basically basically the formula that we did that we derived was that x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared is equal to one this is that the the the, the equation of a of a hyperbola where the basically the transverse axis is along the x axis and the center is at the at the origin of the of the coordinate system now based on this you can say that if i if i rewrite this equation a little bit i can write it as um, basically if if you think about it in terms of for example in terms of uh, for example some two numbers you can see that for example if you have some number some two numbers over here let's for example write for example 2 minus 1 is going to be equal to 1 2 minus for example 2 minus for example 1.5 is going to be equal to 0 0.5 um but if basically if this side of the equation is supposed to be is supposed to be equal to one then you need at least a one over here because if for example suppose that suppose that i write a i write a i write a zero point for example nine nine over here and if i subtract even a zero from it i'll get a zero point nine nine so I will not get a one over here. I cannot get a one over here if if this if basically if this number over here is anything less than one. So this number has to be at least a one so that I get a one over here. So now uh, having this in mind, you can come back over here and write this as x squared by a squared is equal to one plus y squared by y squared by b squared 
and this has to be since basically the since basically we, this is the same thing that we wrote over here since this has become a one so this has to be at least a one x squared by x by a squared has to be this has to be at least a one so that means that this has to be this is in any case it, it this is greater than or equal to one and and well if you if you have this this sort of equation over here where basically if you have this sort of equation what that means is that if if you have x squared by a squared is greater than greater than or equal to one to, if you solve this equation you basically if you want to solve this equation first first of all you need to basically write it as x for example by x by a whole squared is greater than or equal to one then if i take the if i take the square root of both sides of this equation i will get the square root of x by a whole squared is greater than or equal to one uh, the square root of one of course now the the square root of one is of course one we we already know that but the square root of this 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 number is a little bit uh, tricky meaning that for example let's say that uh, meaning that let's say that for example you write the square root of the square root of a is greater than for example is greater than one for example is greater than one then if or i'm sorry not the square root of but the but the basically the the if i write x squared is equal to is is greater than one for example if x squared is greater than one it's it's basically the same it equates the same situation that i have over here so now if i take the if I take the square root of both sides of this equation, I get the square root of x squared is greater than is greater than one. And and before basically you we go any further with the solution of this equation, you can see that for example, if if you have if you have basically if you take x as over here, if you take x as for example positive three. Then you will have basically positive three whole squared is greater than one, which is true because nine is greater than one. And also, if you take x is equal to negative three, you will have basically negative three whole squared is of course also greater than one, which is also true, meaning that negative three is the solution of this of this inequality positive 3 is also a solution of this inequality now if i if i take the if i take this equation and write it as basically the square root of x squared is greater than the x square root of 1 and just simply sim cancel out the, the square root function with the, with the second power of the of x over here and write x is greater than or equal to 1. Of course, 3 is going to be a solution here because x is greater than 1, 3 is going to be a solution. But then negative 3 is not, is not a part of your solution over here, which means that this solution is wrong. Meaning that the way that I have solved this problem, this is wrong. What I need to do in this situation is that I need to basically write this as, I need to write this as basically the, 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 the square root of x squared, of course, is greater than square root of 1. And then when I want to basically simplify the square root function with the, with the second power of x, I have to write it as the absolute value of x is greater than 1. And now, <coughs> and now x can take any value over here. For example, if x is equal to 3, then the absolute value of 3 is greater than 1. 
and if x is equal to negative 3 then the absolute value of negative 3 is basically is uh, is basically the absolute value of negative 3 is also greater than 1 because this is positive 3 of course this you know is, is positive 3 this is also positive 3 so both are greater than 1 and so this solution is this solution is right and and of course there is there there is there is also some more steps to actually solve this 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 equation but but you get the idea over here now so what i need to do in this case in order to solve this equation to to basically solve this equation over here when I want to when I want to basically cancel out the second power of the this argument with the square root function I have to write this as the absolute value of x divided by a is greater than or equal to 1 now this is the right solution of course there is some more steps again to to basically to solve this equation and uh, and how you can solve it is that is that basically you need to uh, you need to basically write this as um, you do need to write it as uh, as plus or minus plus or minus x divided by a is greater than or equal to 1. That means that not, not, not quite, not quite, but Okay, so let me see. Okay, so I think I got the solution here. So basically, for example, if you have the absolute value of x is equal to 1, the way that you solve this, this equation is that you write this as x is equal to plus or minus 1. We already know this, right? So over here I can write the, the absolute, the, basically the, I can write x divided by a, is greater than or equal to plus or minus one which is which makes sense right so now what that means is that either x divided by a is greater than or equal to one positive one or you can say x divided by a is greater than or equal to negative one so this means that basically if i multiply this equation by by a factor of a i'll get x is greater than or equal to a and over here i can basically write this equation as x divided by a and multiply it by a by basically again i can I can multiply this equation by a factor of a and get x is greater than or equal to negative a. Or, or if x is greater than or equal to negative a, Well, anyway, over here you should get what you should get is basically if I multiply by a negative one, I'll get let me see, let me, let me multiply by a negative one, I'll get negative x by a is less than or equal to one. And so then what that means is that what that means is that, for example, negative x is less than or equal to a, or 
where x is greater than or equal to negative a. So now what that means is that if x is greater than or equal to negative a, so suppose that, for example, suppose that, for example, let, let, me, let me write, for example, x is greater than or equal to, um, now if a is actually, for, so let's say that a is equal to 2. If a is equal to 2, x is greater than or equal to a, or x is less than or equal to negative a. Okay, so this, this seems to be right, actually. Meaning that if I write x divided by a is greater than or equal to negative 1, okay, then here I can write, here I can write x is, here I can write basically x is multiplied by a, I'll get x is greater than or equal to uh, negative a. No, there is some, some, there is something wrong here. Well, I do understand this based on a number line, but when it comes to the to the equation, sometimes you get confused in these sorts sorts of sorts of situations. Well, let's say that, for example. Let's say that you have this situation over here. For example, you say that the absolute value of x is greater than or equal to, for example, 3. So what that means is that on a number line, the absolute value of x is greater than or equal to 3. That means that what this, what this actually means is that basically if this is 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3 over here, and negative 1, negative 2, negative 3 over here. So what, what this equation is telling me is that x is basically all the values whose, uh, whose distance from 0 is more than or equal to 3 units. That means that basically including 3, and all the values greater than 3 and also all of these values and all the values less than negative 3. So that means that the, the solution over here is basically x is greater than x is greater than or equal to a if I take a as 3 and x is less than or equal to negative a. So the solution, so that means that if you have the absolute value of x is greater than or equal to, greater than or equal to a, then your solution is x is greater than or equal to a, or basically x is less than or equal to negative a. So based on the same logic, now I don't know what happens here, but it doesn't really matter. So you can basically write, you can basically write over here if x that's if, if x divided by a, whatever that is, doesn't really matter. If you have x divided by a is greater than or equal to 1, then that means that, it, that means that either x by a is greater than or equal to 1, or basically uh, x divided by a is less than or equal to negative 1. Which means that in this case, x is greater than or equal to a, or basically x is less than or equal to negative a. These are the solutions that we get over here. And this is actually right. And you see why it is right over here based on this, based on this concrete example. 
Now, anyway, that's, I mean, the equation is not that important over here. What is important is that, let me, let, let's go through the, the discussion once again, because here we got kind of distracted. So we said that from this equation, we, from this equation, we concluded that basically x squared by a, x squared by a squared is always greater than or equal to 1 which means that either x is greater than or equal to a or x is less than or equal to negative a and x basically represents a, x basically represents the the x coordinate of of that point p that we got on the on the on the, per, on the hyperbola so if this is the hyperbola over here so this distance over here, this is the vertex, and this distance over here is A. And this P over here, for example, is any P over here on the hyperbola. It has some coordinate X comma Y. Now we are talking about this X over here. This is X. <coughs> now what this means, based on the equation that we had, this X is always either greater than or equal to A, meaning that to the meaning that to the right of the of, of point A or it's less than or equal to negative A and negative A is this point over here it means that I, it's to the left of this point over here that means that if you have these two lines over here x is equal to A and this line over here x is equal to negative A x is always to the right of this line or to the left of this line never never over here never over here that means that basically what that practically means is that what that practically means is that no portion no portion of the curve of the curve lies between lies between between x is equal to a x is equal to a and and x is equal to negative a and what that means is that what that means is that you have no real intercept no real intercept no real intercept on the conjugate axis this is your conjugate axis on the conjugate on the conjugate axis that's basically all that we wanted to say over here of course we got into all of these equations and absolute value and all of that but well sometimes it's necessary to do that um, and then, and so basically this was, and so basically the equation that we had x squared by a squared minus a minus y squared by b squared is equal to 1. This was the equation of the, of the hyperbola. If this is your conjugate axis and this is your, let's say this is x axis, this is y axis. This was the equation of the hyperbola where, where basically, where basically the, 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 the center of the, the, the center of the hyperbola is at the center of the, or the origin of, or the origin of the coordinate system. And the transverse axis, and the transverse axis is along the x-axis this is the equation of that hyperbola and in the same way you can you can basically derive the equation of the hyperbola where basically the where basically the the uh, where basically where basically the, the transverse the Basically, the center of the, the hyperbola is at, at the origin, 0, 0. This is the center of the hyperbola. 
and the transverse axis is along the is along the y axis so this is now the transverse axis this is now the transverse axis and uh, the equation of such a hyperbola you could using the same procedure you can derive it to be basically uh, y squared by uh, y squared by a squared y squared by a squared minus x squared by by b squared is equal to 1 and you cannot write this as and you can see that basically you can see that the term that 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 contains the x squared over here the term that that contains the x squared is is negative and the and the denominator for that is b squared so you cannot write this as for example simply write it as for example um, based on this for example you might think that you could based on this for example you can simply you could simply write it as x squared by for example then instead of a squared write b squared and then minus uh, y squared by a squared is equal to 1 so these are not the same things and this is wrong right this is wrong you have basically the term that contains the x squared is the negative term and that is that is important for many different reasons so so then basically you you need to basically the equation of this hyperbola becomes becomes basically this thing over here y squared by a squared minus x squared by b squared is equal to 1 and you could derive that as well if you if you want to and these equations over here are called the standard are called the standard standard equations equations of of the of the hyperbola of the hyperbola so that is that now there is still a few things to discuss here that we will do in the next video we run we we, we ran out of time but we'll do the rest in the in the next video